It's a free space. I want that Koopa. No. <laughs> And now for our feature presentation. Okay, everybody, time now for a fresh attempt at Jeopardy for the Sega CD, one of the toughest Jeopardy games on the market, if not the toughest. But we'll see how it goes. Sega CD version of Wheel of Fortune, I have a run going on with over $413,000. Jeopardy for the Sega CD is kind of tough to start a run for, but we'll see what happens. Start a run. How many players? Three. Please enter your name. Here we go. Let's begin. All right, contestants, let's begin <laughs> round one. There is one daily double on the board. Let's look at the categories. We have six categories up there. What are we going to be dealing with? The human body... Iowa, birds, foreign currency, middle names, and finally, houses with house in quotation marks. Contestant number one. Human body for a hundred. For one hundred dollars. The body makes you yawn when it needs more of this gas. Contestant number one. You'll have 60 seconds to provide your response. What is oxygen? Yes. Yeah. Very good. The body human for the human body for 200. For 200 dollars. Here is the clue. Gene splicing has produced humulin, a man-made version of this hormone. Contestant number one. What is uh, insulin? Yes. All right. Human body three hundred. For three hundred dollars. Even on a thick-skinned individual, the thinnest skin covers these. Contestant number three. Let's see if Cindy knows this any better than I do. 
The eyes. Yep. Good job. So she's tied with me for the lead right now. Good job, Cindy. But we're still very early in the game, so. Human body, four hundred. The answer is. From Latin for basin, three parts of this basin-shaped structure are the ilium, sacrum, and coccyx. Contestant number one. Uh, what are the? What is? Ilium, sacrum, and what is the pelvis? Good job. All right. Great start. I'll take um, human body for five hundred. For five hundred dollars. Here is the clue. Okay. A mole is a group of cells containing an unusually high concentration of this pigment. Contestant number one. What is melanin? Yes. Oh yeah. Off and flying with twelve hundred dollars, Iowa for a hundred or one hundred dollars. The answer there. Is... This state capital has a doll collection of first ladies wearing their inaugural gowns. What is Des Moines? Contestant number one. Because Des Moines is the capital of Iowa. Yes. Iowa for two hundred. Daily Double. It's the Daily Double. What would you like to wait? I'd like to do just 200, please. Mrs. Olson of Folgers Coffee fame grew up in Stanton, where the world's largest one of these stands. Uh, I'm going to take a guess and say, what is a windmill? No. I didn't think so. Oh, sorry. That's not right. I didn't wager too much, so that's okay. What is a coffee pot? Okay. That's alright. I'm still in the lead. And I didn't wager too much. Iowa 300. For $300. Puffer Billy Days, each, held each September in Boone, celebrate the means of transport. This means of transport. Puffer Billy Days. September and Boone celebrate this means of transport. Not really sure about this one. The railroad. Oh. Had a slight hunch it might have been that, but I did not want to ring in. Iowa for 400 For $400. A 1954 Rodgers and Hammerstein film was set at this annual event in Iowa. Contestant number one. Even though I think it was 1945, what is State Fair? Right. Iowa for 500. For $500. Here is the clue. Iowa's official rock. It may look plain on the outside, but inside there are crystals. Again, I'm not real sure about this one. The geode. The geode. Okay. Next clue. I'll take birds for a hundred. For one hundred dollars. In Florida, these birds were killed off in the wild for their beautiful pink feathers. What are flamingos? Contestant number one. Yes. Yeah. Select. Ignore that, folks. Uh, birds 200. For $200. The answer there is... Though this southwestern bird can fly, it prefers to sprint at speeds up to 15 miles per hour. Contestant number one. Uh, what is the uh, Roadrunner? Yes, select again. 
Beep, beep. <laughs> okay, I'll go with birds for 300 please. For $300. Some of these nocturnal birds have tough, soft feathers on their heads called ears or horns. Contestant number one. What are owls? Yep. Owls it is. Birds, 400. Yes. Select again. I'm going to roll them out. For $400. These purplish-black Asian birds that can that can imitate human speech are types of starlings. Contestant number one. What are minor birds? What is a minor bird? No. Wrong. Not a minor bird. It's okay. But I'm still in the lead with 1,700. A minor bird, right, okay. No H, so I had to drop the H, okay. Uh, birds 500. For $500, here is the clue. The Arctic variety of this seabird migrates farthest, about 22,000 miles back and forth in a year. Contestant number two. I have a hunch, but I'm not sure. The Arctic turn, okay, that wasn't my guess. Right. So I am glad I did not ring in. Cindy, on the other hand, has eight hundred dollars. I have seventeen hundred. Barbara, we have yet to hear from. Okay. Or Houses for two hundred. Abbreviated quack. It investigated communist influence inside and outside the U.S. government. Contestant number three. Ooh. What is the House Un-American Activi Activities Committee? Yes. The House Un-American Activities correct. Committee. So that'll get Cindy up to $1,000. <whistles> Houses for, for $100. $100. The answer is... It's the elected lower house of the British Parliament. Contestant number one. What is the House of Commons? Or is it the House of Lords? I'd like to say, what is the House of Lords? No. Should have gone with House of Commons, probably. Sorry. That's incorrect. Oh, well. Contestant number three. The House of Commons. I should have gone with that. Should have trusted my hunch. Good job. But I did not trust my hunch. It's okay. I'm not going to beat myself up about it. Foreign currency for 300. Here is the clue. It's the monetary unit of New Zealand and Australia. What is the dollar? Contestant number one. Beer. Forces. Australian for beer. Good job. Yeah, yeah. I'll go with um, foreign currency for four hundred. For four hundred dollars. Answer. Until the decimal system was approved in nineteen seventy one, the British pound consisted of two hundred forty of these. Contestant number one. What are sterling silvers? Incorrect. No. So I dropped down to 1500. Contestant number two. Pence, all right. Yes, that's correct. First time we hear from Barbara this game. We're two now, Barb's. 
Foreign currency for, or for 200 For $200. Answer. This country's Peseta features an engraving of Juan Carlos I. Contestant number one. Uh, what is Spain? Yep. Yes. It is indeed correct. Spain. Okay. Foreign currency for five. For five hundred dollars. Here is the clue. Originally, it was a Hebrew unit of weight equal to about a half ounce. Contestant number one. What is a shekel? Yes. Indeed. Twice. Back in the two thousand dollar range. Okay. I'd like to go to foreign currency for hundred. For one hundred dollars. On this country standard coin, you'll find the motto "Liberté, Egalite, Fraternite." Contestant number one. I'm gonna say what is France. Yes. It is indeed France. Okay, I'll have houses for three hundred. For three hundred dollars. Answer. The animals made this traditional New Orleans folk song a number one hit. Contestant number three. Ooh. The House of the Rising Sun. Correct. Correct. Good job on that one, Cindy. Well, Cindy only trails me by 900 bucks, but that's okay. We're going to keep going. Middle names for five hundred. Five hundred dollars. Harman Zoon was the middle name of this painter. Harman Zoon was the middle name of this painter. If I were to take a guess, I'd say Paul Gauguin. Rembrandt. It was Rembrandt. Next clue. We have four of them left. Middle name's two. two hundred dollars. Ronald Reagan's middle name are the last name of our 28th president. Contestant number one. What is Wilson? Yes, that's correct. All right. Middle names for 300, please. For three hundred dollars, the answer is. Former Pinkerton detective Samuel Hammett wrote under this middle name. Contestant number one. What is Dashel? Gotta be. Right. Yes, because I've heard of Dashel Hammett. Okay. I'd like to have middle names for four hundred, please. For four hundred dollars. Middle name of AFL CIO President no. Joseph Kirkland. Contestant number two. See if uh, Barbara knows this any better than I do. Lane. Joseph Lane Kirkland. Yes. Uh huh. So she doubles her money to $800. Three clues left. Yeah. We have middle names for 100 and the two clues in houses. Middle names 100. Or $100. If you know the rest of the story, tell us the middle name of radio commentator Paul Arant. May he rest in peace. Contestant what is one. Harvey? Because I used to listen to Paul Harvey News back when he was alive. And we all miss him very much. Correct. $2,900. Okay. I'll go with houses for 400 $400. Answer? A vengeful Vincent Price displayed dead bodies in this 1953 3D thriller. A vengeful Vincent Price displayed dead bodies in this 1953 3D thriller. Not sure about this one. Oh, House of Wax. Oh yeah, which was remade in 2005 with uh, Chad Michael Murray, I believe. Last clue. For 
Let's take a look at the answer. All right, let's. Thomas Jefferson served in this Virginia assembly from 19 from 1769 to 1774. Hmm. Should know this, but for some reason I don't. The House of Burgesses. Okay, well I didn't know. But I do finish the Jeopardy round with $2900, so I'm off to a good start. Let's get ready for Double Jeopardy, in which we'll double the dollar values, put two daily doubles on the board, and get six brand new categories. Let's go to Alex Trebek. In Double Jeopardy, there are two daily doubles somewhere on the board in these categories. And what are the six categories going to be for Double Jeopardy? We have U.S. History. Okay. Architects, ooh, interesting. Quotes, hmm. Hodgepodge, okay. Religion, and finally, Sinclair Lewis, ooh. These categories could prove to be a bit of a challenge. Just at number two. But we'll see what happens. Barbara starts us off. U.S. History for two hundred dollars. Here is the clue. Okay. The region, once known as Indian Territory, entered the Union along with the rest of the state in 1907. Contestant number one. What is Oklahoma? You'll have 60 seconds to provide your response. 100% sure. Yes, that's correct. All right. I'll have U.S. history for four hundred. For four hundred dollars. One of two constitutional freedoms taken away under the Sedition Act of seventeen ninety eight. One of two constitutional freedoms taken away under the Sedition Act of seventeen ninety eight. Ooh. What are freedom of speech and press? Okay. They would have accepted freedom of speech or freedom of press. Okay? I'll have U.S. history for 600 For $600? Shortly after he succeeded William Henry Harrison, his entire cabinet, except for Daniel Webster, resigned. I don't remember what year William Henry Harrison was president. John Tyler. John Tyler. The city of Tyler, Texas was named after John Tyler. Uh, U.S. History 800. For $800, let's take a look at the end. And the next clue. In 1896, the Democratic, Populist, and National Silver Parties all nominated him for president. I have a hunch. I have a hunch but I'm not sure if I want to ring in. William Jennings Bryan, and it's a good thing I did not ring in because that was not my guess. Okay, let's go about US history. For $1,000, the answer is... In March 1965, Martin Luther King Jr. led 25,000 freedom marchers from Selma to this capital city. Contestant number two. It was... Ah ha ha! Sorry, incorrect. Barbara doesn't know. I have a hunch, but again, I do not wish to buzz in. I have several guesses, by the way. Montgomery. Okay, that was not one of my guesses. So I stay put. Next category, uh, Architects 200. For $200. Robert Mills designed this DC structure for a few years the world's tallest. Contestant number one. What is uh, Washington Monument? Yep, that's 
the one. Yes, that's correct. I'll take architects for four hundred. For four hundred dollars. The answer there is. Answer there. Julia Morgan, the first licensed woman architect of California, designed San Simeon for this magnet. Contestant number three. Mm, not real sure. I have a guess. Oh, William Randolph Hearst. Okay, that wasn't my guess. Good job. I did not have a guess. Okay. Architect 600. For $600, the answer there is... Pierre Lascaux, Claude Perrault, and I.M. Pei are some of the designers of this museum complex. Contestant number one. What is the Louvre? 100% sure. Yes, that's correct. Uh-huh. Okay. Let's take Architects for 800 For $800, here is the clue. This Wisconsin-born architect worked for Lewis H. Sullivan from 1887 to 93. Contestant number one. Who was uh, Frank Lloyd Wright? Thought I heard something about him being born in Wisconsin, but I'm fairly sure that's correct. Is it Frank Lloyd Wright? Yes. Yes. Select again. I trusted my hunch. Let's have architects for a thousand. For a thousand dollars. Colonial architect Peter Harrison is noted for this city's Redwood Library and Turo Synagogue. Contestant number three. We haven't heard from Cindy in a while. Oh, Newport, Rhode Island. Okay. Newport, Rhode Island is correct. Yes, that's correct. So we're tied right now. Or no, we're not tied. She trails me by 1,900. It's Excuse me, I don't know what I'm saying. Well, Hodgepodge for 400. In 1962, Mount St Stalin, the USSR's highest peak, was renamed this for the country's system of government. Contestant number three. I don't know this one. Mount Communism. Yep. It's the one. Yes. Select again. Not communism. Okay. Quotes for 600. Oh, one of the two daily doubles. It's a daily double. Daily double. What would you like to wager? She has 3,200. How much of her 3,200 will she put at risk? $300. Okay, well, that'll take her to 3,500 if she gets it right. Here's the clue. He wrote... The right stuff was not bravery in the simple sense of being willing to risk your life. If this were me, I would have gone small too, because I don't know this one. Oh, Tom Wolf. Yes, select again. It is indeed Tom Wolf, so let's keep it going. Quotes for 400 dollars Answer. In Man and Superman, he wrote, Hell is full of musical amateurs. Oh. Oh. Oh, where is that? Oh, man. George Bernard Shaw. Okay. I didn't even have a, a guess, so let's, let's just keep going. Where to? Uh, Sinclair Lewis, well, 400. dollars the answer is... Lewis worked briefly as a janitor at the New Jersey Socialist Colony of this other Sinclair. Uh... Sinclair, 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 Sinclair. Oh, we learned about him in history. Sinclair... Up 
Captain Sinclair. Ah, and we learned about this in history. Oh well. It's just been a couple of years since I've had history, okay? Sinclair Lewis for a thousand. For a thousand dollars. Lewis's first successful novel, it helped establish the publishing firm of Harcourt, Brace and Company. <whistles> He's getting all the tough clues. Main Street. Okay. But then again, this is Jeopardy. It's not supposed to be easy. There are some easy Jeopardy games out there, but this is not one of them. Sinclair Lewis, $200. For $200. In the late 30s, Sinclair Lewis served as book editor at this weekly rival, The Time Magazine. Contestant number two. Let's see if Barbara can get herself out of the hole. Newsweek. She got it. Yes. That is correct. So Barbara's out of the hole now. She doesn't have any money, but she does get to select. Where will she go? Sinclair Lewis for eight. For $800. When this book was published in 1927, Lewis was invited to come to Virginia to be lynched. Ugh. I think we also learned about this in history also, but I can't remember off the top of my head. Elmer Gantry. Yeah, we did learn about that. It's just been a while since I've taken history. It's been at least two years. So, yeah. Sinclair Lewis for 600 For $600. In preparation for this 1925 book, Lewis traveled the Caribbean with bacteriologist Paul de Cruyff. Contestant number two. Aerosmith. Yes, that's correct. Barbara got it right. Well done. Okay, we're two. Hodgepodge, two hundred. Two hundred dollars. Edward H. Engel was the first dentist to limit his practice to this field of straightening the teeth. Contestant what this one. orthodontistry? What is orthodontics? Yep, orthodontics. Correct. Yes. I should know because I've had braces before back in the day. Had him for three and a half years. Okay. Next up, uh, Hodgepodge 600. For $600. Let's take a look at the answer. So there. This actress and Weight Watcher spokesperson tells how she found happiness and health in This Is Living. Contestant number two. I don't know. Does Barbara... Lynn Redgrave. Good job. I think she passed away, though, recently. May she rest in peace. So Barbara doubles her money, and where to now? We have uh, 10 clues left. Hodgepodge 800. For $800. The answer there the is... The last major party candidate for U.S. president who had the initials WW... Contestant number three. Okay. Oh, Wendell Wilkie. That's right. Right. Cindy's starting to gain on me now. She trails me by 600 bucks. Uh-oh. Quotes for a thousand. thousand dollars. The answer there. Is After the 1936 election, James Farley said, As this state goes, so goes Vermont. Contestant number one. What is New Hampshire? Wrong. Mm. Not New Hampshire, even though I know for a fact New Hampshire borders Vermont.
Maine. Maine. At least I took a good guess. Quotes for 800. The other daily double. It's a daily double. How much will Cindy wager? What would you like to wager? She has a $400 lead over me. She's going 1500 Okay. Longfellow wrote, Deeds are better than th are better things than these are. Ah, she doesn't know. So I'm back in the lead where I belong. No, I'm afraid that is not correct. So you fail. Words. Seven clues left. Quotes 200. For $200. Ambrose Spears defined this as a period of cheating between two periods of fighting. Hodgepodge a thousand. The answer is... On July 29th, Norwegians celebrate the feast day of this patron saint. I, had, I ain't got a clue. Olaf the second. Okay. We have one full category left, which is religion. Two hundred or two hundred dollars. In the Shinto religion, Mount Omtaki is second only to this Japanese mountain in sacredness. Contestant number one. What is uh, Mount Fuji? Yes. All right. Forty-one hundred. Uh, four hundred, please. For four hundred dollars. The Council of Trent set the number of Catholic sacraments at this number. I have a guess, but I don't want to risk it. And that was my guess. Seven. Oh well. Six hundred? For six hundred dollars. Answer? The calumet used in American Indian ceremonies is a type of this. <laughs> Again? I have a hunch. But I don't know. Pipe, yep. Again, I should have trusted my hunch. 800. For 800 dollars, here is the clue. In this ancient civilization, the king was thought to be Horus incarnate. Contestant number two. At least Barbara buzzed in, so that's fine with me. Okay. Egypt. Yes. So she's at two thousand dollars. Send you 2800 me 4100 We have one clue left for $1,000. Have to hope for a good Final Jeopardy category. For $1,000. Answer? Male initiates of this religion add Sing to their names. Female, Kaur. Contestant number three. Oh, dear. The Sikhs. Yep. Right. So at the end of Double Jeopardy, I'm in the lead with 4,100. Barbara has 2,000. Cindy, 3,800. So it's anybody's game. It will all depend if the Final Jeopardy category is to my ni my likings and my knowledge. My liking and my knowledge. We're back for Final Jeopardy. And the Final Jeopardy category for today is... 
So that's a good one. Theater. But there's a chance that Cindy might get it wrong. Answer number one. Cindy might get it wrong, and if Barbara got it right, she couldn't catch me. So I'm going to use some strategy on this. Contestant number one, what would you like to wager? I'm going to wager nothing. The final Jeopardy clue is... Your Christopher Plummer and Jose Ferrer won Best Actor Tonys for this role. Good luck. Uh, I'm going to say... It was Henry VIII, but I'm guessing. Contestant number two. Now, if Barbara gets this right, then she can't catch me. But Cindy might get it wrong. Contestant number two. How much would you like to bet? I just have to keep a good thought. Sixteen hundred. Okay. So it should be okay. Clue is you'll have 60 seconds to provide your response. Good luck. Well, it's not going to be Henry VIII. I don't know that. Contestant number My three. only hope is that Cindy gets this wrong. If she does, I get to start a run. Contestant number she three. She doesn't. What would you like? Then I have to, to redeem myself. Final Jeopardy clue is you'll have 60 seconds to provide your response. Okay. Good luck. Oh, uh, well, I don't get to start a run yet. Oh, well, it's okay. Contestant number two, we'll start with you. Let's see what your response was. What is Cyrano de Bergerac? Good job. I have no idea on that one. And your final Jeopardy wager was your total sixteen hundred, so she goes to thirty six hundred. Contestant number three, your final Jeopardy response was You also said Cyrano de Bergerac. Correct. And your final Jeopardy wager was your three thousand forty, so you're at six thousand eight hundred forty dollars. Contestant number one. Let's see what your response is. I said Henry VIII. Sorry, that's incorrect. Yeah. And your final Jeopardy wager was your total? Uh, I didn't wager anything, so I'm going to say 4,100 in second place. Contestant number three. You are now the reigning Jeopardy champion. Congratulations. Well, that's all right. What are you going to do? video coming soon.